Paranormal Life Channel. Clues around us of previous lives. Hello people, I'm Fuad Rahman. Welcome to Paranormal Life Channel. Many believe in reincarnation while others do not. Reincarnation is based on the assumption you will be born again after you die. There are numerous books published, radio and TV shows and even religious texts concerning the notion of rebirth. Please like and subscribe as I will run series on the reincarnation phenomenon this concept of reincarnation is far too large to ignore. Many people came forward claiming of remembering former lives. In 1952, a psychiatrist Maury Bernstein, used a hypnosis to regret Virginia Tighe, died in 1995, to her childhood in order to treat her phobia. But she slipped into a past life in Ireland as Bridie Murphy. Under hypnosis Virginia began her story under hypnosis of her previous life in 1806 when she as Bridie Murphy was eight years old, in a house in Cork. She was the daughter of lawyer Duncan Murphy and his wife Kathleen. At 17, she married Sean Brian McCarthy, a lawyer who claims to have taught at Queen's University in Belfast, where she moved. Virginia described her tombstone and the state of her life after death witnessing the fall that led to Bridie's death and her funeral. She recalled that it was a feeling that was neither pain nor happiness. Somehow she was reborn in the U.S. 59 years later, but it wasn't clear how this happened. Virginia herself was born in 1923 in Marys, Midwest Virginia, she had never been to Ireland and she never spoke an Irish accent. Research the story of Bridie Murphy was first introduced in a series of articles by William J. Barker published in the Denver Post in 1954. Books were published on the story as well as a movie made. Some researchers investigated the her claims and found all of her claims to be accurate. Even children spoke of having other mommies and other daddies. Most of these claims could actually be proven. Another case in point was one Carl Jung, a known psychologist for example treated one of his patients for a phobia. She had a bizarre fear of fire. If someone someone would light a match, she'd go berserk and scream. She slipped back into a former life in France during World War I where she and her entire family perished when the Germans bombed their house. So, you two have previous lives, not just one or two, but quite a lot. The clues surrounding you which are indicative of your previous lives are actually staring you point-blank into your face. Here are some clues of our former lives. The way we live. We arrange our homes, possessions, clothes, cars and general manner of existence in the way that suit us. We rearrange things and our surroundings that make us feel comfortable, or simply put, so that we can feel at home. That feeling at home is an indication of how we felt in former lives. Our surroundings and what we wear and the way we talk, the way we walk and conduct ourselves are all powerful indicators about our former lives. Some more clues about our past lives. Deep down we can somehow recollect and recognize that happy past existence memory flashes surface all the time. But shrug it off as a habit. We consequently, unconsciously surround ourselves with things which serve as reminders of our happy former lives. If certain things from former lives would remind us of unhappy times, we don't know why, but we would have an immediate disliking for such a thing. This former lives memory is much like framing a certificate that would remind ourselves of our achievements. Take for example, you may have a strong liking for mountains, but you don't know why. It could be you were a mountain climber in a former life. Even a homeless woman who are unsure of her next meal, might be extremely van and haughty, arrogant, because she could have been a queen in a former life. Each one of us has a favorite dream spot, like a cozy cottage or being high up a cliff overlooking the ocean. How many times didn't you close your eyes and imagine being at your ideal spot or place you carry in your mind? Each one of us has an escapist and favorite place we have pictured in our minds, a place where we feel comfortable. Where did the dream projection of your ideal place come from? It has obviously derived from your dream-like fantasies which came from your subconsciousness. Your dream place is always cozy and is permanently comfortable to be there. Certain places envelope us with a strong feeling of deja vu, a deep inner emotion you have been at that place before. 
Yes, certain places and countries can remind us of being there in a former life. The way we consider ourselves depends largely on the type of society and environment we were born in. However, some of our traits also surface from other lifetimes. Former life indicators are continually around us all the time. Deep down in our emotions and hearts, we do indeed comprehend we have vague remembrance of another existence which does not stem from our present life nor upbringing. Therefore, we unconsciously live a pleasant life. These can be examples of abundance, security, emotional or the feeling of satisfaction, or high levels of achievement, academic or secular growth. Even if we are not consciously aware of it nor even think about it, these emotions and non-existent flashes are clues of a former life. Some physical symbols are all around us. They help us attract this pleasant energy we experience in other lives. For example, a pair of army boots can also have you feeling a rush of energy and emotion, because it could be that you served in World War I in the trenches. Some guys reenact a former life in the way they walk. A guy walking straight upright as if he is marching could have been a soldier in another past lifetime. Or it could be your type of hobbies or interests in life. Movies can also trigger a former life. Did you not notice, you frequently go to the same environment in your dreams?